Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and I have a wonderful, wonderful um, guest with me today, Dr. Narian, who is going to be talking to us about his experiences with peace. And we, of course, know that um, peace is something that is subjective at times, right? We, we choose peace and we move into that energy of peace uh, whenever we recognize that it's in our best interest. And so, without further ado, good morning. How are you, Dr. Narian? Morning, Marcy. How are you doing? It's I'm a pleasure. Very well, thank you. And thanks so much for being here. Um, so can you tell us, what is peace to you? To me, peace is in a way similar to light. So just as light is all there is and darkness is just an appearance, an illusion. So in the same manner, peace is all there is and whatever appears to be not in harmony with peace is merely an illusion. And if we let go of that illusion, there is nothing but peace. And this also ties in uh, with the concept that I emphasize a lot, and that is you are part of the source. If you really think and you are aware of being part of the source, there can be nothing that is not peace and joy. It is just the more we live in that awareness, the more we become aligned to what is natural. So in, in that sense, peace is all there is. And so you're saying that peace is a very natural part of us mm -hmm. and accessible to us at all times. If, it's, mm -hmm. if, if everything is peace, then we should be able to connect with it whenever we find ourselves going astray. Yes. So why do we have so much difficulty? So the reason, the fundamental reason is we get misidentified with things which we are not. Uh, the primary example of that uh, is if you look at suffering, it's mostly emotional. And it arises because let's say I have a memory of a hurt uh, that somebody caused me or I caused to somebody else. That memory is a psychological baggage, but in terms of present moment awareness, it doesn't exist. But by attaching to it and making it real, I bring suffering into my existence in present awareness. So the mind plays tricks and the root cause of those tricks is that we become identified with things that we are not. Uh, we might become identified with our body we might become identified with what we are supposed to be before we can allow ourselves peace. So we might think that unless I am financially successful or secure, there can be no peace, which is a limitation because if you look at people who have achieved high levels of consciousness, oftentimes they have absolutely nothing uh, in terms of material possessions. You might have expectation about how you are supposed to be before you can be at peace. You might have expectations about being a parent or a partner or how spiritually evolved you have to be before you can experience peace. And all of that is made up in your mind. If you let go of all these judgments and baggage, peace is right here and you can just, you can just feel it uh, by being here right now. Interesting. So you're saying that, first off, that we, we, we create this suffering as we define ourselves as anything other than peace. But I'm also hearing that it's associated with in fact, when we, de when we define ourselves as something other than what we truly are, that we're judging ourselves. And so judgment is a huge disruptor of peace. Yes. 
I'm not certain that we're too aware at times, like when we're judging ourselves and how easily we, you know, lose track of what's available to us innately. Um, can you speak of any personal experiences where you have chosen peace, even though you may have been in the midst of chaos yourself? There have been, uh, I mean, there have been instances where, for example, I was in a business relationship and it didn't go well. And one of the things that kind of nags at you is when you think that you have been hurt by somebody else. You can hold on to that feeling till you die or you can let go. You can let go in a moment and you say, whatever happened was for my own education and I would, have, I would not have learned any other way. And that's actually a fact. There are a few things in life which may seem like challenges, but if you look back, those are the only ways you could have learned. So instead of honoring the learning, it's easy to focus on the hurt or what did not go well. And that would be trying to learn the wrong lesson from a worthwhile experience. Mm. So when we're stuck in that arena of defining ourselves, judging ourselves without any conscious awareness of it, we just perpetuate this cycle of separation, separation, <laughs> separation, separation. Um, well, you make it sound very easy. And I know that, you know, people, myself included, you know, that these are challenges um, that sort of arise on an everyday basis. Do you have any recommendations for people in terms of how to increase our awareness of when this is happening and how to come back into alignment with peace? So different practices work for different people. Uh, the core practice is to bring your awareness to yourself. You can do that through meditation. Uh, you can also do that by just being in nature where your awareness is kind of overcome by the beauty of nature and you forget about your little things that are going on. Uh, some people may find it in books. Some people may find it in activities that are completely engaging, like playing sport or creating something or music. So there are as many ways to experience this as there are people. I would say experiment with what works and one thing I also recommend is educate yourself on your true nature because that's the fundamental template from which all other beliefs arise. And reality is just a belief. Uh, this, this cannot be overemphasized. We might be absolutely certain that what we are experiencing is real. But we forget to see that what we are experiencing is an interplay of what's happening out there filtered through our beliefs. So unless we clear up the beliefs, it's very hard to be in peace. So I guess first, we have to start believing that this is possible for us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I know for myself, um, when I thought about um, when I was actually in the planning stages of September and thinking about how I wanted to focus my energy. And I realized that the International Day of Peace was the 21st. I could feel inside this sense that it was a big leap in that moment, that I had to do something within myself rather than focusing on the chaos and the suffering that's all around us. And I had to bring myself into this place where I could cultivate peace within myself in a sustainable way. And what I like about what you've said is that each of us, rather than thinking that there's just one way, right? That we can, that we can experiment and we can find our path for that moment, that day, for that experience, and how freeing that is. And it's, 
the complete opposite of judging ourselves and defining ourselves. In fact, it's, it's really setting ourselves free, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Setting our individuality is a core principle of peace. So there is always a culture around us which will try to morph us into what they want. Uh, it might be a state, it might be a corporation, it might be a religious institution, and they have their own agendas. And to stand in the midst of all these influences, and instead of being affected by them, to honor ourselves and what is true for us, that is the highest sign of consciousness. May we all be so blessed as to reach that in this lifetime. So tell me, um, how can everyone find you? How can they find more about your work, um, your work with Children of Infinity? And um, well, actually, you might even want to tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I have created a non-commercial, non-profit website. It's called childrenofinfinity.org. And the reason I call it Children of Infinity is that's who we are. Uh, we are part of the source. It may seem that we have lost our way and we cannot find things. Regardless of how dark it seems, we are always connected to the light. Mm. And the degree to that we recognize uh, life will be easier and it will honor the source. So I have a course in there, it's called Foundations, which goes into the foundations of non-dualism in terms of practical and modern research. So I talk about near-death experiences, past life regression, and channeled information uh, to lay the groundwork. Uh, and then there are two more videos. First one of them is about how to align with your life purpose, because I believe that we incarnate into this reality for a purpose. And the great waste is that if we don't go on that journey of purpose, uh, that's an incarnation wasted. Uh, and the last video on there is about joy. Uh, I think one of the core responsibilities uh, in this experience is to experience and spread joy, which is never emphasized in many of philosophical or religious traditions. So uh, these three videos are free. And my commitment to humanity is that whatever I produce will always be free, that you can watch in your own time, learn what you can and practice what you want. So uh, you can go to childrenofinfinity.org and you can find uh, the videos under courses and you can also see recommendations. These are books and resources that I recommend. How fantastic. And can people reach you directly through that website as well? Yes. Okay, wonderful. And I also have a monthly uh, workshop on different topics. So we have one coming up on Sunday uh, on 20th that's on honoring the body as a temple of the divine. So there are different aspects of practicing non-duality, uh, starting from the physical, going into in more, uh, for example, emotional, psychological, spiritual, and so on. So. I have these uh, workshops every month that you can attend for free. Uh, at the end, there is a time for question and answers. Uh, feel free to take advantage of that. How wonderful, really absolutely wonderful. And I can vouch for um, just the integrity and the caliber of that work. It is outstanding. So I also have dedicated myself um, and this month in particular, to cultivating more of the energy of peace so that we can truly celebrate this day that is upon us next week on the 21st. And so I invite each of you to go to heartshiftcoach.com and there you'll find seven ways to cultivate peace and also a copy of the peace pledge that I'm about to recite for you. And I hope that you will have more of these conversations amongst you, your friends, your family, um, maybe people you're just meeting on the street. It's a good, it's a good icebreaker, right? <laughs> and mask to mask, our conversations can still take place. And that's something that we need to remember. So um, here's my peace pledge from my heart to all of you. 
I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, cultivating clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for my beliefs, my thoughts, my choices, my actions, and the experiences that they produce. And of course, in taking compassionate action at all times. I take this peace pledge and I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours. Peace beginning within. And so it's peace in and peace out. And together, we will cultivate more of this energy and really remember how life is meant to be lived. And so thank you so much, Dr. Narian, for being here. And thank you for your deep you. wisdom. And um, for everyone, um, just thank you for your time and for your focus and your attention and your willingness to look at things differently and to listen to different ideas with all of their possibilities. Bye-bye. This was absolutely a wonderful time being with you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.